Hey everybody, how you doing today? Today we're going to be talking about working with uh, bevel and emboss layer style in Photoshop CS6. And uh, my name is Buddy Blackford, if you haven't figured that out by now. So what a uh, bevel and emboss does is it kind of makes the uh, layer look 3D. And it gives it a, a, an illusion of 3D by using um, some shadows and contour and stuff like that. So let's uh, go ahead and get in there. Go ahead and uh, either make a, a text layer or a shape layer. These are the easiest to work with for uh, bevel and emboss. So go ahead and um, add your bevel and emboss. And you can see already that, let me let me move this uh, piece over. Cancel this out real quick. Move the piece over like this so we can see our options. All right, there we go. Now you can see already that we've got the illusion of 3D. Now, um, there are a couple other um, properties of bevel and emboss that I'm going to need to go over. We've got our contour here and texture, but let's start off by going um, over these kind of things over here, these properties. So we've got our style. And the styles, um, we've got outer bevel, we've got inner bevel, emboss, pillow emboss, and stroke emboss. And uh, just click on those to see the different types of uh, the differences between these. So you can see that. Inner bevel is uh, the most like 3D-ish. And then we've got our technique here. And we've got a couple of different techniques for each style. So we got smooth, we got chisel hard you can see like that looks like it's been uh, like a router has been taken to it and then we've got chisel soft and you can see the difference there it looks like uh, someone took a bad router to it my cat is jumping all over me it's really climbing up my leg and stuff like that all right um, so we'll leave it to smooth for now uh, we've got a depth here and that goes from 1 to 1000 and higher depth values increase the intensity of the bevel. So if I go like this, you can see that there's a lot more bevel going on. And it doesn't increase it a whole lot, but you've got a lot of um, numbers in between, so you got a lot of fine tuning that you can do. So now we've got our direction here. And basically you pick up or down, and that just either that reverses the highlights. The next thing we've got here is our size, and that goes from 0 to 250. And you can see how that affects it. Um, basically how far in the bevel goes and how large it is. Um, and then we've got soften here, and that goes from 0 to 16. And that uh, gives us softness to the edge of the bevel. Kind of like blurs it. So um, use that depending on what you're, what you're doing. Let's go down here to the shading section. <clears throat> now, shading goes, um, we've got the angle here. And now the cat is climbing on the computer. OK, now he's off. All right, so now we've got our angle here. And the angle goes from 0 to 360. And it, de it determines the uh, angle of the, uh, the light source. So if I move it around. You can see it. Um, you you have a depth like you can go closer to the middle of the circle, or you can come farther out, and you can see how that differently affects the uh, the bevel and emboss there. We've got the use global light, which affects everything that you bevel and emboss in your document, and then we've got an altitude here. Now the altitude goes from zero to ninety degrees and um, it determines the height of the light source and basically in relationship to this image. So if I increase that to maybe something like 75, you can see the differences. So that's 75 and this is 15. So when I have it at 75, the, the shadows aren't as dark and they're more like around the whole entire thing. When I do the 16, it uh, basically has them the shadows are harder and then there are more specific spots. And the angle and the altitude can both be adjusted at the same time by dragging on this little circle here. And you can see the differences. 
So when you move in towards the uh, center, that's the altitude. When you move around the circle, that's the angle. So let's keep on going. We've got gloss, gloss contour, and that basically uh, does the um, uh, brightness. So if I click on these different ones, you can see the different brightnesses and how they uh, are different within the image. I usually just stick with the first one. Then anti-aliased here gives you a some smoothness to the uh, to the um, image here. We've got highlight mode. We've got basically like blending mode. So we've got a screen for the highlights. Usually when you're doing the highlights, you either want to choose light and screen, color dodge, linear dodge, or light color. And these are all lightning properties, or lightning blending modes. And then when you are down here to the shadow modes, you want to use either darken, multiply color burn, linear burn, or darker color, because these are the darkening blending modes. We've got our opacity for each one, and then we've got our different colors here for our... Uh, for our lights so you can see that there's a reddish a reddish tint going on here instead of yeah instead of white and then if I change this here to red you can see that instead of uh, black it's now like a purpley color and since they're blended in with a blending mode they are it's blending in with the blue so it's not going to be red it's going to be purplish because red red and blue makes purple so there's a let's put it all the way down to black well, you, you want to go with like an off black. All right, so there's that. Then um, let's keep on going down. Oh, we're that that was it for that. No, but now we've got our uh, couple other things over here. Um, contour. If I click on that, it um, basically just redistributes the uh, brightness levels. So if I unclick it and click on it, it you can see like it's just getting distributed a little differently so either pick that or not pick that depending on your likings and then texture here we'll just add a texture element to it um, on our contour as well if you click on the actual word contour you get your different contours let me take the texture off and you can experiment with uh, different types of contours with this uh, uh, curve here if you would like to and you can add points to the curve. It's just like the uh, curves um, The curves Effect up here the color correction for curves and then we've got our range slider and You can see how that affects it's more smooth when you have it up higher Not as smooth when you have it down lower All right, and then we go to texture and this gives you the ability to add a pattern so there's uh, how that works. Um, snap to origin, we'll uh, center it up. And then we've got our scale to either make the pattern larger or zoom in and zoom out of, the, of it. And we've got our depth. And that uh, affects the edges. You can invert it. And then there's also a link with layer. And if I uncheck that, it basically just links with the layer. You can just leave that checked if you want to but that's all the stuff for bevel and emboss and there was a lot of different properties but we went over them all so hopefully you now you're a master with the bevel and emboss you can make things look more realistic or 3d if you need to um so i i pretty much like this one it's a nice thing to bring out some more character into your um image and the same as with drop shadow you don't want to overuse this in your image you don't want to try to make everything look 3d using a bevel and emboss um, because ultimately it's not like real 3d if you need to use a whole project and there's a lot of 3d stuff in it then you're going to want to either use shapes or use an actual 3d modeling program so that's it for this and uh, hopefully you guys are pros at this now and um, on the next tutorial, we're going to be going over, um, let's see what we're going to go over, uh, color overlay. So see you guys in that one, and I look forward to seeing you guys there.